Good afternoon, everyone. I'm so glad to be here. We had to miss on last week, but I'm, I'm glad to be here to help. Everybody's having a blessed day um, so far. We know that God is good and he's truly worthy to be praised. And we know he's constantly moving um, about his people, amen. And continually blessing us and giving us, we thank you for his grace and his mercy. But we know y'all that our God is a good God that we have today. So I welcome you today on Lunchbox Live. As we begin to continually talk about Revelation, we'll be talking about today, Revelation chapter one, um, verses um, 13 um, through 20. That'd be Revelation chapter one, verses 13 um, through 20. We we'll to have a good time. Revelation is a very um, good book and it teaches us um, things that already happened, things uh, are going on right now and things to come. The three uh, dispensations, the three visions that John had to give um, to the people of God. And so that's what we're picking up today. I'll um, give everyone a few minutes to chime in. And we ask that uh, when you chime in and you know someone that you want to be, be on the program, just um, text them or, or, or tweet them or call them and tell them to join us on Lunchbox Live on Facebook. Hello, Sister Land. how are you doing today? And so I want to make sure before we go into chapter two and three that everyone um, understands verse 13 and 20. I hope you know that when we begin to talk about Revelation 1 and um, chapter 1 and 2 and 3 is talking, it's really going to talk to the church. It's a warning to the church. It's a revealing of where the church stands today and how God sees us and how God does warn his people. Now, remember, we always think that God warns um, the people outside of the house of God. But you have to understand that God warns the house of God before anything else, because you are his in his chosen um, generation, his, you know, his peculiar people. Um, that's who you are. And so he talks uh, uh, to us um, first. Amen. And we're to go out and minister his word um, to other people. So I'm going to pray so we go ahead and get started. Um, Father, we just thank you and we bless you for your word. We ask you to have your way, God, and move by your spirit to give us an ear to hear what you're saying. Give us understanding and give us wisdom and let this word um, really prick us in what you wanted to, that we can move forward in you, that we continue to, to do the Father's business. And we thank you. It's in Jesus' name we pray and we said, amen. Amen, y'all. God is truly good. You all in today, Revelation chapter one. I'm gonna go to verse 13 first. It reads this. And in the midst of the lampstands, I saw someone like the son of man dressed in a robe reaching um, to his feet and with a golden sash wrapped around his chest. Now, it, this is, we're going to begin to talk about how John perceived or how, what he sees, who the son of man is, because he said, like a son of man. Now, first thing I want, it opens up, it says, and in the midst of the left. And so now we see that he saw someone like the son of man, which was in the midst of the lampstands. And this is very important because now he's talking about, he says, I see them in the midst because in the lampstands that represented the church. I want everybody to understand that. So we understand now that the son of man, the vision like the son of man was in the midst of the church. And we, we read beforehand that there are seven churches. So he's in the midst of all of the seven churches. He didn't leave them yet. He's in the midst of them um, about to do something or about to say something um, to the church. So Christ was in the midst of the church. And even today that we thank him for his grace, he's in the midst of the church trying to communicate to us and trying to get us on the path that he called us to be on. Does everybody understand that? He's in the midst of the church trying to get us right before he comes back. So he would never start speaking to us. He would continue to speak to us because we live in an area of grace. 
things that sometimes we don't deserve it or the word grace means divine influence, that he can sit there and get us to where we need to be, get us to where we need to go and to also be about his business. So we go down to verse 14, it's a description of what he see. His head and his hair were like, I mean, were white, like white wool, glistening white, like snow. And his all seeing eye were flashing like a flame of fire, piercing into my bed. He says, now his eye was piercing. Hello, sister um, Aisha, piercing um, in him. Um, that's what John says, it's piercing me. Um, his eyes and his uh, all seeing eye. When we say all seeing eye, that means Christ sees everything. What's done in the dark, he sees everything. When you, when no one else is watching or when no one else is um, seeing what you're doing, Christ has an eye and he sees everything and there's nothing that you can hide from him. So when you know that or get that revelation about that, maybe it would tamper or prevent or stop you from doing things that you would do knowing that he is watching your every move. Amen. God is truly good. Hello, Sister Parker. How are you doing today? So then we go on. I, I, I hope I'm going slow enough. He says, his feet were like burnished white hot bronze refined in a furnace and his voice was powerful like the sound of many waters. Now he says voice. It's a powerful voice. It's not no little voice, but it's powerful, like a sound of many waters. In his right hand, he held seven stars. Now, he has seven stars in his right hand. Now, I want you to understand that in the verse 20, it tells us what the seven stars are. The seven stars are the angels, are the divine messengers of the seven churches. So, in his right hand, he's holding the messengers or the angels, uh, messengers, to go to the seven churches. I want everybody to understand it in his right hand. He's in the midst of the church, but in his right hand, there are messengers. Every um, church has some messengers that he's trying to get his message to the church. Does everybody understand? I don't care how good or how bad your church is. He's constantly trying to give you a message. Either, um, and his message is always trying to get us right because he loves us so much. And, and this message is not about he's going to give us house cars. His message is about um, his who he is. It's about going out and preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, going out and telling people um, about the kingdom of God. It's, it's going out and telling people to expand the kingdom, go and do the things that I've done, that you can do greater works. I want everybody to understand, you, you, you all, that the message is not about a get rich message. The message is the gospel of the kingdom. So that's what he has in his right hand to start the messages to the church. And so when we go to verse two and three, it's not going to say anything that, hey, I'm going to get you this or the best cow or nothing like that. It's all, when, when Jesus is talking to the church, it's about spreading the good news of who he is. It's all about him. Nobody else is all about him. So what if you have, if you don't have, these you want. The gospel is, is, is nothing more than the gospel of the kingdom of Jesus Christ. And it's not based on you on what your financial status is. It's on your education, how big or small um, you may be, uh, according to what the world state knows. It's, it's not about any of that. It's all about the gospel of the kingdom. So then it goes on, it says, um, in his right hand, he had seven stars, and from his mouth came a sharp two-edged sword of judgment. Now, now listen to what it says. In his mouth, remember, He's in the midst of the church. I want to get y'all get to, he's in the midst of the church. Hey, Brother Torres, how you doing? He's in the midst of the church. In his right hand are the seven messengers, right? But out of his mouth, he's speaking a two-edged sword, which is judgment. He's speaking who, judgment who? Who are they talking to? He's not in the world. He's in the midst of the seven churches. I want y'all to get that. He has in his right hand, seven messengers or angels to each church. And it's the sword is talking judgment. I want you to get that in 1 Peter 4 and 17 states this. He's going to judge the household of God first. 
Now, this is important. And all this is in chapter one of Revelation. He says, I, I'm not coming to judge the world first. I'm not coming to judge your enemies. I'm coming to judge the household of God first. Why? Because you know better. Does everybody, anybody have any questions before we move on or what we talked about? We just talked about um, verses 13 um, through verse 16. Uh, I'm, I'm talking about the part where in 13, it, it, it says that the, the, the Christ, the Son of Man, was in the midst of the churches, the seven churches. It says the lampstands would represent the seven churches. Now, at that, then all of a sudden it goes in and, and, and give you a description of John's giving you a description of what he sees. And then he says in his right hand, what he's seen was seven stars. And then it says that um, in, in his... Um, and from his mouth came a, a sharp two-edged sword. That's what the word is. It's supposed to cut asunder, rightly dividing the word of truth. I want everybody to understand him. That's what the sword is going to do. And, and so this is, and his face reflecting his majesty and the Shekinah glory was like the sun shining in all its powers at midday. Amen. All right, so there's no other question. We're going to verse number 17. When I saw him, I fell at his feet as though dead. And he placed his right hand on me and said, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last, the absolute deity, the Son of God. Now, uh, that's a good question we have by Sister Parker. So the angels were going to judge the church. Know that the angels was going for to give the church a message because God was going to judge the church. The, 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 always God has sent his messengers out or his word. Before he ever judges, he'll give you the word to A, hey, or give you a warning, things you need to do, you need to get right. Because according to my word, I'm coming to judge the church. So the angels was going to deliver his message to the seven churches, what they're doing right, amen, and what they're doing wrong. And then after that, the judgment of God it will come. It'll give them a chance to change. But the judgment, after the judgments come, after the messengers are speaking, then God will judge what you do, what did you do with the message that was given to you by his messengers. Amen. You're going to be judged because it's going to be it's going to tell you, give you an assignment of what to do or how to get right or how to get back on track. If you heed to what the messengers say, then and, and then the judgment is going to be righteous for you. But if not, as we say, he's going to blow out the candlestick. Yes, okay, a word of correction. Yes, well, I say this now. Not all of it is a word of correction because we know by last week, there are seven churches. Two churches didn't receive a word of co correction. Amen. I want everybody to understand because we know Church of Philadelphia didn't receive a, a word of correction. They receive the word. They keep on doing. Um, they keep doing what God wants them to do. They're doing a good job. Okay. So now, verse seventeen. Um, when I saw him, I fell at his feet as though dead, and he placed his right hand on me and said, "Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last absolute deity, the Son of God." Verse eighteen. And the ever living one, living in and beyond all time and space. I died, but see, so he said, this is Christ speaking, because we see that, I'll go back, John is seeing the glorified state of him. I mean, at his glory, where no flesh, uh, stripped of flesh from him, just the glory um, of, of the Son of God. And so then he says, um, continue, he says, I am alive forevermore, and I have the keys of absolute control and victory over death and of the Hades, the realm of the dead. That was verse 18. So it's letting them know that, guess what? I also not only just have the seven messages, but I have the keys of, of death and of Hades. I have those keys. That's why he says death has no more sting over you, no more power over you. He took the keys. He came, he rose with all power from heaven and on earth. Amen. So, so now then we get on verse 19. We're getting ready to close out chapter number one. Now, listen to this. 
So write the things which you have seen in a vision. So John is going to write down things he's already seen. And the things which are now happening. He says, now also, I need you to write down the things which are happening right now. Do y'all understand that? I need you, John, to write down the things he's already seen and the things which are happening right now. And then it says, and the things which will take place after these things. Now, we're not at the place of these things which will take place after these things. We're in the thing, we're in the place of what's going on right now. We're in the, the church age, or some may call it dispensation of grace. Y'all hear me? We are in the church age, or some may call the dispensation of grace. Remember, the, we have moved from the last dispensation. The last dispensation was the law. Now we're in a dispensation of grace. So we begin the dispensation of grace when Christ hit the scene until now. We're in it until the grace will end and then we'll be when John writes the things which was to come. Now, the word dispensation means it's administration of a household or an estate. It really means an economy. And what that means, in Luke, Luke chapter 19, what Christ did was gave his people, it was a parable that he said, he gave um, the people um, finances, I should say, to take care of things until he came back. And it all depends on how you handle what God has given you, because what God has given you is giving you a portion to take over and, and use what he's given you to, to furthermore further what he has given you. So if he gave you five, he wants you to further the five and make it 10. Does everybody understand how I'm trying to explain what dispensation means? So what God wants us to do, I'm talking about the church. God has given each person gifts or each person a talent to be used for the kingdom. Now, everybody does not have the same number of talents, but it's give you the, the grace or the talents um, that he wished for you to have. Amen. So don't get upset if you have one, 10, five, it doesn't matter. You have to use what you, how many you've gotten. So if you want more, much is given, uh, much is required. So then we ask ourselves then, since if we think of dispensation as the economy, God has given the church to go out and just preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Um, how good are we doing that? Um, because in the pandemic that we was in, we was in a place where God was trying to reset the church. Research, get, get back to God. Now, watch this. In the pandemic, resetting the church, getting us back to him and only him to get rid of, of man's of visions, to get rid of what we're doing, to get focused on the first message that he preached. The kingdom of God is at hand. So what did he do to get to reset? He stripped us from actually a building and for us to be congregated um, and, and we talk and we just see each other and we smile and we move on. It's like a social gathering. Really the church was almost a social gathering and we forget that the house of God was not for a social gathering. It's for us to praise and to worship him, to lift up his name, for him to heal the sick, uh, for him um, also to um, um, deliverance is supposed to take place, the blind should see, the captive is supposed to be set free. All these things are supposed to come out um, when we get together in the church. That's why when the Bible says someone comes in, that he rather for people to prophesy that, that they will fall down and worship him. He says, if you lift me up, I'll draw all men unto thee. So then the church was nothing to do with a building. However, we made it a building. We want this great emphasis and all these chairs and have three and four and five and six services. And and we, we made the vision about other things. We know we start new programs. We had this great momentum. Uh, growing the church. We grow the church 
as we see it as people growing numbers. God never intended for us to grow numbers. He wanted us to grow spiritually. He wanted us to grow into knowing who he is, not concentrate on how many people there, are, how, who has the biggest and the baddest choirs, or who can hoop the most or anything like that, who drive the fancy cars. It was just a simple message of Jesus Christ. And how, so what happened in the pandemic, we got off and God said, okay, let's reset this thing. Let's go back. When we go back again, we want to go back and do it the right way. The vision that I have given you, the vision where they, they don't see men at all. All they see is Christ. That's what the church and where I am, I'm supposed to grow that. And I'm supposed to go grow the people and tell them the message of Jesus Christ. And we're supposed to go out and share the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's where we are right now. Now, the reason what the reason why we have the seven churches or God has messengers, because God has to speak to every church and tell them where he sees them right now. I want y'all to understand that God is sent messages like, hey, this needs to change right now. You need to shut this down um, right now. The thing that you're doing right here, you need to shut this program down. Um, what you're doing in the program, you need to, you need to shut it. Any program that you're doing that takes away from who I am, it needs to be shut down. I want y'all to, and, and why I want y'all to really, really get this because in this, just like it, it says, I believe it's First Peter where it talks about Jesus um, didn't want anyone to fall short. He, he was long suffering. That's why it took Noah so long because he waited for people to get saved. People say, look, he's waiting. And so right now, while we in the dispensation of the of grace or this church age so long, because God has long suffering and patience for us because he don't wish that any man shall perish. So he's holding on, he's waiting for his comeback because the church needs to understand where they are and to bring as many people as they can to him because Christ don't want to see no one um, not be saved. He wants everyone to be saved. He wants everyone to know who he is. He wants everybody to have, to have a chance to understand about the kingdom. That's why he's not going to come back. He's, I'm going to hold off until the kingdom of God is preached in all the world. I want y'all to understand that. That's that's what he says. Now, in, in the next chapters, two and three, it's going to be harsh. Why? God is going to tell you exactly what you're doing and what you're not doing and warn you to get it right because I'm coming. Who are you talking to? He's letting you know I'm right there. So we end with Revelation chapter um, um, 19. I'm sorry, huh? It says, so write the things which you have seen in the vision and the things which are now happening. That's the church age. And then it says, and the things which will take place after these things. And verse 20 reads this. As for the mystery of the seven stars, which you saw in my right hand, and the seven golden candlesticks, the seven stars are the angels, divine messengers of the seven churches, and the seven lampstands are the seven churches. Now, I, before we go on to move into two and three, I need everyone to understand that God is talking to the church. He's talking to you. Really and truly, um, as he reset at the church, you have to ask yourself, what has God said to you? You know, what has God told you to do? Has he told you to be about this business? Have he given you an out and said, oh, you don't have to do it anymore? Have he said to you, you don't have to love anymore? You don't have to forgive anymore? No. If you understand the church, if you understand um, the dispensation of the Holy Spirit that we live in, live in now, that remember, they, man has rejected the God, the Father. They have, man has rejected the Son. It's going to be a time right now that men are going to reject the Holy Spirit. And once you reject the Holy Spirit, where do you go from there? Because you need the Holy Spirit because it's going to teach you all things. It's going to lead you to all truth. Now, where we are in the church, if you don't have the Holy Spirit, how do you know what's true and what's not true? So he's going to stay right there. Think about this. God said, I'm going to stay in the midst of the church. 
not going to be there and it could be no power there because you have not heeded to my word or you not you have not submitted um, to me, but I'm going to be there because what I tell you what's going on, you're going to know that I was there and guess what? I wrote the things that you was doing that was good and I wrote the things that is unacceptable to you. And once I wrote the things that was good, once I wrote things unacceptable, I'll tell you if you don't get it right, then things are going to happen to you. That's what's about to happen in the church. It's a woe, it's a warning and and I will let you all know right now, if you're back at church right now, or you live your life back like you used to, and things have not changed, then you're doing something wrong because you have you should have changed. You should have forgiven. You should, you love more. You care for Christ more. You worship more. You you, you communicate you communicate with Him more. And I'm saying not just your morning prayer throughout the day. You're you're talking to God. You you seeing God. Are you seeing people? That, that you shall have compassion for who don't know Christ, that you're about telling them Jesus Christ. I'm letting you know that where we are right now, the church age, the dispensation of grace, God is God giving us a warning. We don't know how long he is delaying his comeback. He's going to come back. He's delaying it because he wants us to get it right. He has patience and he is long suffering. Now, as we close today, where are you with him? Where are you in him? Are you doing what you want to do? Or you, Christ says, you know, I'm about doing my father's business. Are you procrastinating? Are you lazy? Are you doing everything else, but just doing the thing God I want you to do? Are you letting people steer you away from God? Are you letting people drag you away, moving you out of the will of God, causing you not to move forward into what he called you to do? Then you're wrong because he has, I have the power with them. Nothing should stop you or hinder you from doing what God says he called you to do. Now, here's the thing. If you're not doing what he told you to do, you can have all the excuses that you want. But if you're not going to do it, he's going to take it away. Remember, he's going to come to you and ask you, what have you done with what I have given you? I want everybody to understand it before we close. He's going to ask you all the things, all the talents, all the gifts that I've given you. What have you done with it? Have you progressed? Have you buried it? Have you lost it? What have you done? Where are you? Where is the church right now? And we always say, well, we are the church. Where are you then? Are you taking care of his business? Or are you all about you now? You have a spirit of pride in you. Whatever things is in you that you need to ask for deliverance, I pray right now that you ask God to forgive you, to deliver you, to break that spirit off of you that nothing can hinder you from doing what he wants you to do. Amen. So um, Re Revelation 1 through 13 through 20, it, it talks about that he's in the midst of the church. He's got the seven spirits in his hand, on his right hand, or the messengers or angels right there with him. Amen. He's telling John to write it down. He also telling you, even though I got a right, right hand, my voice is like a two-edged sword. He says that my two-edged sword is like judgment. And I'm coming to judge the church first. He says that. I want everybody to know, he says, John, write what you've seen. Right what's happening right now, and right what's going to happen after this dispensation. I want you to know we're in the church age right now. It's not going to last forever. This dispensation of grace is not going to last forever. God, oh, I'm sorry, Christ is coming back. We thank him for his long suffering, amen, and we thank him for his grace. But God is not playing with the church right now. Either you're going to do it or you're not going to do it. Either you're going to be with him or you're not going to be with him. Either you're going to be for him, or you're going to be against him. Amen. I like all of your comments. I thank you for visiting with us on today. Uh, we have Sister Parker kept asking a lot of questions. Where are you in him? Where are you in him? Where are you? It's a question. Where are you? Where's the church? Can the church please stand up? You, me, all of us. Can the church stand? Can the real church please stand up? Please stand. Can a real church sit there and do the things that God called them to do? Can the church begin to preach the kingdom? Can the church begin to be led by the Holy Spirit? So I thank all y'all for joining in on today. Remember on next week, we go into chapter two. I believe the first church 
is the Church of Ephesus, and we will discuss that on next week. We'll church, take one church at a time. Um, so remember, he loves you. Um, Father, we just thank you for your word, and I pray right now for the people who are listening. First of God, I ask that you forgive us for our sins. Forgive, forgive us for our shortcomings. I pray that we be about your business, Father God, that we give you our best, that we do everything that you would have us to do. Um, Lord, I pray right now that we be quick um, to heed to your voice, and I pray that we don't deny or not listen to the Spirit of God, that we have an ear to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to us, and we begin to obey you in every area of our life. Lord, I lift up every church, that all the churches get right, right now in Jesus' name, and we pray. We all said amen, amen, amen. Everyone be blessed, and remember, where are you right now? Next week, Revelations chapter 2, we'll be talking about the first church. Y'all have a blessed day, and remember that Christ will never stop loving you.